Hey guys, as you can see from the title of the video, the topic of this video is child suicides in Japan. So it's obviously a really disturbing and distressing topic. So those of you who don't think you can handle it, please stop watching. Go watch something else. Um, it's been talked about in the in Japan this week. It's been a topic of discussion about the child suicide rate because in 2018 there are 332 cases of child suicide which is the highest statistic the highest number in 30 years or something so it's particularly high whereas the general suicide rate has actually supposed to have fallen so it's always a little bit hard to know with these statistics because a lot of the time the suicides here a lot of suicides here are put down to accident you know, someone goes in front of a train and, you know, often it's put down to accident. And sometimes that's just to make it easier on the family. You know, they just, everybody just say, says it's accident, even if they know it's not true, just to make everyone feel a little bit less painful, you know, feel a little bit less pain. So we don't know how accurate the statistics are, but we just have to, you know, I mean, really, one child suicide's too many, isn't it? So if there's... 332 or something in a year obviously it's way too high so they broke it down into reasons so a little bit hard to know how accurate that would be as well but they had as the main or the 12 percent 12 percent of the examples were family disagreements the suicide was triggered by family disagreements just want to add to sadly the the numbers were actually elementary school, junior high school, and high school students. So, you know, that could be anyone from, from six to, to 18. So they said 12% they put down to being triggered by family disagreements. And then strangely, they said nine, another 9% were due to um, being reprimanded by parents, which is pretty high, isn't it? 9% reprimanded by parents and then went and killed themselves. Um, and then, oh, there was a few more statistics there. One of the ones that stood out was uh, concern about their future prospects was was the reason 8% of them, was put down for the reason 8% of them um, killed themselves, which is just terrible. When kids care that much about their future prospects, that they would kill themselves if their future prospects... I mean, this is such a Japan thing, all of this. All of this is such a Japan thing, you know. And again, all it's terribly sad and terribly tragic, but again, anybody who lives here long term isn't going to be terribly surprised by any of this, you know. And then sadly, and sort of perhaps tellingly, 58%, they didn't know what triggered it. So 50%, 58% of them, they said, um, they didn't know what it was that triggered the person to kill themselves. Now that's... That's tragic and not surprising either. Because those of you who saw the, saw the hikikomori video recently about the people hiding in their rooms, the hikikomori hiding in their rooms, if you haven't seen that video yet, stop this video and go watch that one and then come back to this one. Because it's the same thing. You know, all these, these a lot of these topics that we talk about, you know, recently we talked about the hikikomori locking themselves in their rooms because they couldn't deal with society. And that was, that's estimated to be one to one to two percent of Japanese society are locking themselves away in their rooms, right? Because they can't deal with it. Thirty percent, uh, thirty thousand a year are killing themselves overall, and then three hundred thirty-two kids are killing themselves. It's all the same thing, you know. These things get talked about here like they're all different topics, you know there's this problem and there's that problem and there's that problem they're all the same thing they're all they're all a result of the same problems you know we, we made a video recently about the robots you know people being expected to behave like robots here you know human beings expected to behave like robots and not show their feelings or emotions or have any sort of ideas or thoughts or anything of their own you know, and and all the things, all the things we talked about in that hikikomori video, about uh, all that list of stuff that contribute to the hikikomori thing, and it's all it all directly relates to this. 
you know, all the same things. People being expected to all do the same thing and all, you know, again, buddy, again, buddy, again, buddy. And 58%, nobody knew. And you can just imagine, we've seen this, right? We've seen this. Those statistics of how many people kill themselves every year are so high that if you live in Japan long term, it's very likely that you will know someone who knows someone who kills themselves here. Um, you don't always get told that. Um, sometimes you just get told that somebody's died and you might not hear why. Um, but we actually had a, a family member, um, fortunately not a close family member, but a family member nevertheless, um, who retired and, and, and shortly after retiring killed himself. And and it was all a big surprise. Everybody was surprised, you know, and and you know, well, he was sick, they said. He was sick. He was sick. So he was sick, meaning meaning that he, he was depressed. He quit quit his job or he, re he retired. You know, he was 65 years old, he retired. And then, as we talked about in the Hikikomori video, everything in Japan is all about your job and all about your, your, your schoolwork and all about that. And there's nothing else. And that's that, you know, here's that, what's that percent? 8% of kids kill themselves because their future prospects weren't good. How tragic's that? You know, that kids care that much about their future prospects that if they don't look like they're going to be good, they kill themselves. And that's that thing that, you know, the, the most important thing. You know, in, in a lot of cultures, the most important thing in people's lives is their family. And it's not in Japan, as we've talked about on lots of different topics before. The most important thing in Japan is is work and 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 schoolwork and and your your mission as a robot is your your most important role and and nothing else you know family or your mental health or your happiness is secondary. So way way behind. And all they all they ever say when people are struggling here is gambare, gambare, gambare. You imagine, I mean. To a lot of people that live in modern societies, it would be really surprising. Imagine if you weren't allowed to talk about if you were struggling, or you weren't happy, or you're having a bad time, that you're expected to not talk about it. Don't complain about it. And then if you did say to someone, a family member or a friend or somebody, that you were struggling, they'd say, try harder. Try harder, try harder, try harder, which is what they do here. Gambare, gambare. Gambare, gambare. Try harder, try harder, try harder. So that, you know, 58%, nobody knew what the reason was that the kid killed themselves. Well, pfft, that's because nobody talks about their feelings or their, you know, if they're struggling or if they're having a bad time or they're not happy. Nobody here talks about it. Nobody here asks about it, you know? Nobody asked about it. So how sad is that? Their family and their friends had no idea they weren't happy. And they were so unhappy that they killed themselves. You know? There's more to it too. We did actually make a video about this once before. The Japanese thinking about suicide is, is very different from what it is in other, a lot of other cultures, you know? It's, it's not, it's not as, as shunned, or it's not as, it doesn't have the stigma attached that it does in a lot of our cultures where, you know, it's not considered to be, well, first of all, it's not considered to be sinful because most Japanese aren't Christian, so there's no religious reasons that a person can't kill themselves here. Um, and then culturally, you know, the cultural history of suicide in Japan is all quite romantic. You know, it's portrayed in movies and anime and things like that as quite a romantic, noble thing to do. You know, it's not considered to be a, a crazy thing to do, it's just a, quite a noble thing to do, you know, is the way it's portrayed in movies and in anime and things like that. And, you know, sort of like in the, in the same way that Romeo and Juliet, you know, the final part of Romeo, Romeo and Juliet where they, they kill themselves, it's sort of like that in, in Japanese literature and Japanese movies and anime. And it's, it's a common common ending to a story is that, is that someone kills themselves or both people kill themselves or everybody kill themselves, you know. And, you know, there's, a, there's a, a, a famous story we actually talked about once before, the Byakutai, the white tigers in, in Aizu Wakamatsu, um, towards the end of the, the civil war in Japan. And their town was surrounded and their castle was being attacked. And these young guys, 13 to 18 years old, 
we're at the samurai school. It's a school for samurai kids, you know, and they're being taught to be samurai. And when the war was going on, they said to their, their, you know, the head teacher of the school, they wanted to go and fight too. And he said, yes, off you go. So they went off and they were fighting and they were losing and they, they were retreating back up a hill. They retreated back up a hill and they looked across and Tsuru Gajo is the castle that, that they belonged to them and it was on fire. And so they thought that that meant that they, their side had lost. So they all killed themselves. There was um, 18 of them or something, big group of them. And they all just got down on their, on their knees and, and, and killed themselves. Um, you know, 13 to 18 year old kids. And that story is, is really famous in Japan, the Byakutai, the White Tigers. You know, they consider that to be a really great story. So, you know, that's the way suicide's portrayed. So, when, if kids had have had any exposure to the topic of suicide, it's possibly been romanticised like that, you know. And then they find themselves in these circumstances where they're feeling sad and depressed and everybody around them, you know. The teacher at school's not going to say, come here and talk to me about, what, about what's troubling you, you know. They don't do that here. The teacher just, gimbare, gimbare. And everybody puts on the mask, you know, everybody puts on, well, literally sometimes put on the white mask, but, but you know, put on the, the face, the brave face, and hide your feelings and hide your emotions and just gambare, 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 until you can't gambare anymore. And that's, that's what happens, you know, 30,000 suicides a year overall in Japan. And you know, that's the result, that's the result of that thinking. You know, nobody's, almost nobody's aware of the, the, even the simplest mental health care type thinking, you know, the, the awareness of it, the consequences of different behaviours, the lack of sleep. You know, we, we made a video about that once before, about how little people sleep. It might have been on the interview playlist. You know, there's a lot of people, including high school kids here, that average five hours sleep a night. Which, you know, mental health people will tell you, five hours sleep a night is not enough for good mental health. You know, and particularly not when they're being pushed to study and go to Juku and go to club and do all the other robot things that they're supposed to do, you know. So, it's just sad. It, it's really hard not to get, you know, sort of pissed off about this because, you know, the kids are suffering and, and, you know, it's unnecessary. You know, it's unnecessary. It's just sad. It's really, really sad. So, you know, this is a terrible topic, terrible topic. And, and But like we always say, all we do is talk to you and show you what we see and what we hear in Japan. And this week, this was the topic, you know. And it's just one of those sad things about Japanese society that just just sad. I mean, there's a lot of things about Japanese society that's good that they've held on to, that they've good that they've maintained their traditional ways in a lot of things. But there's some things like this, the mental health thing, you know, it's just sad. It's just sad when people suffer and it's just a thousand times worse when it's kids suffering because of adults' attitudes, you know, that the adults haven't haven't learned about any of this stuff. Just there's so few people here aware of any of this stuff. You know, teachers wouldn't be on the lookout for it. They've got no idea. Nobody's, it's just totally different. Anybody who's lived here long term would know. It's just no, it's just, it's considered, it's considered to be uh, impolite or it's considered to be intrusive to show an interest in another person. You know, ask, are you okay? You know, you, you don't seem very happy. Are you okay? You know, it just it's just not considered the thing to do here. And then it's not the considered the thing to, to tell a person if you're struggling or if you're having... Everyone puts on this brave face and everything's okay and everything's okay. And, and if they are struggling or having a bad time or depressed or any of the other things, they just hide it. They just hide it. And that's the one, one or two percent hikikomori hiding in their rooms. It's easy to understand that. They can't cope. They can't talk about it. They can't show it. They end up hiding in their room, you know, and or, you know, and the thirty thousand killing themselves. It is, there's no sort of no other option. 
that's the thing and that's the thing with this this robot life with everybody doing the same thing and being the same way and nobody saying anything different or having another opinion or changing anything or doing anything different to anyone else and conforming conforming most of the time that's really cool you know 95 percent of the time or 96 percent of the time that's great everybody's behaving the same way it makes a really ordered uh neat tidy organized society you know and and for most of us it's a wonderful thing you've got consistency in the way everything's done and consistently high quality and you know there's lots and lots of good things about this everybody does the same thing everybody does it the same way nobody complains to anybody most of the time that's really good you know in some societies people whinge and complain too much don't they in some societies and and most of the time here not listening to people complain ever is actually quite pleasant you know not hearing any negativity whining and complaining and groaning and the rest of it you know everybody just gets on gambare and they just do it you know and 96 percent of the time that's great you know but unfortunately and it's sort of like japan's pretty ruthless it's sort of like that's sort of the deal is that if you're one of those one or two percent that can't hack it and end up hiding in your room or you're one of the thirty thousand that kills yourself that's sort of considered oh they they were sick they couldn't keep up couldn't keep up with the pack sort of thing and that's sort of considered to be just sort of like uh, Darwin's, Darwin's, uh, is it Darwin, the, the evolution thing? You know, people can't, people that can't keep up, people that can't hack it, fall by the wayside, that's sort of just natural attrition, you know? That the 90, 96% or 98% are fine, and it's working well. We don't need to change anything, everything's fine the way it is, and that 2%, well, that's going to happen, isn't it? You know, you're going to get that 2%. They're going to not be able to do it, not be able to hack it, not be able to keep up. They're just going to fall by the way. And it's sort of, that's sort of the attitude. It's sort of accepted. They talk about it. They talk about the suicide thing. And this week, they're talking about the kids suiciding. And they talk about the hikikomori. They talk about it. You know, the, the topic last year, last year's topic of the week was people killing themselves because of too much work and being overworked. And so some big companies made a big show of saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna ban overtime, or we're gonna do this, or we're gonna do that to, to stop people overworking and dying from overwork. And so there was a bit of talk about that for a little while. That was a, sort of like a, a trending topic. That was a trending topic for a little while last year. And then it sort of stopped. We didn't hear any more about it. So, um, it's like that. So, you know, the, a couple of weeks ago, the trending topic was the hikikomori. Um, this week, the trending topic's the kids killing themselves. So, next week, the trending topic will be something else. The trending topic a, a little while ago was um, violence. Oh, bullying was one of the other things on that list. It was only they said it was only two percent or something. That seems a little bit low. Bullying's big, big problem here, you know. But these, it's all, it's all basically the same topic, really. It's all the same thing. Expecting people just to to be robots and to do the thing, you know. That it's just part of this system is that 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 two percent of people are going to suffer because they can't keep up and they can't deal with it and they can't hack it. And, you know, the statistic, and this is, this is again, it's not a different topic, it's the same topic. Uh, there's a, there's a, a statistic somewhere about the number of foreigners that come to Japan to live. We hear people all the time saying, I'm going to move to Japan, I'm going to move to Japan. And there's a statistic somewhere about how many people that come to Japan with the intention of staying permanently go home within 12 months. And it was more than half. It was really high. It was really high. I can't remember what the, what the percentage was, but it was really high. A really high percentage of people. They come here with the intention of staying forever. And because they might have might never have been here before, or they might have been here before on holiday. And the, the experience of living here on holiday is different. Because a tourist is expected to behave like a tourist. So it's a totally different set of expectations on tourists. 
So, you know, if you come here and experience Japan as a tourist, that is a totally different experience than coming here and living here. And then the longer you live here, the higher the expectations come for you to behave like everybody else, like a good robot. And and the, the reality is that most foreigners that come to Japan can't do that. And that after a period of time they go home, they go, no, I don't want to do this anymore, and they go back to their own country. So, you know, it's all, you can see, it's all the same topic, isn't it? It's all the same topic, you know? And again, again, it's a great place to live. And again, like with all our videos, this isn't supposed to be a criticism thing. It's hard to be, it's hard to excuse this stuff. It's hard to make excuses for it or, or say that it's all great, because it, obviously it isn't, is it? Because the consequences of, of it are tragic when, you know, 332 kids killing themselves just in one year that's almost one a day. That's really, really bad, obviously. So it's hard not to feel something about that, you know. But again, we're not supposed. To, we're not. We're not trying to just uh, criticise. What we're trying to do is just <coughs> tell you guys what we see and what we hear. And everything in this video so far has been in what we see and what we hear. So. Just what keeps coming to mind is the funeral for that guy that killed himself. You know, that the, the, nobody had any idea. They were all like, oh, and it's quite obvious. You know, he, he got, he, he retired and it was only a couple of months after he retired. And obviously he just felt he had no worth to anybody anymore. Because, you know, his whole worth was his, his job. And that he didn't feel he had any, had any worth anymore. And and nobody had any idea because nobody sits and talks about anything of consequence here. You know, they don't sit and talk about their feelings or their, you know, their depression or anything negative about what they're experiencing. So nobody had any idea. And they're, and they're just putting, oh, he was sick. He was sick. And when I got one person, I ended up with one person aside and, and said, what do you mean by sick? And oh, he... You know, he wasn't happy, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's a fair call. That's a fair call. He's killed himself, so it's fair fair to say he wasn't happy. I was just checking to make sure he didn't have a terminal disease or something. He wasn't physically sick. He was just depressed, you know? And chances are, if he had someone to talk to about it, who, you know, even even an amateur psychologist, uh, you know, who, 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 an amateur who knew a little bit about psychology, or just someone who he could talk to about it, you know, it's just a human thing, isn't it? You know, if if you have some problem like that and you can't talk about it, it's not going to get better on its own, is it? Most likely. So, so anyway, incredibly depressing topic. Um, some people are a bit confused about how the world works and how YouTube works. Uh, disliking something on YouTube will not change the reality, okay? So you're not going to change the suicide rates in Japan by thumbing down this video. Although you can try if you want to. <laughs> Whenever we talk about depressing subjects, you know what happens after we talk about subjects like this? A whole bunch of people unsubscribe and lots of people click the dislike button. Because they think somehow disliking the video will change something about the world. <laughs> So if, if, dis, if clicking the dislike button is good therapy for you and makes you feel better about everything, go ahead and do that. <laughs> and if unsubscribing from, from this channel because you don't want to hear about stuff like this makes you feel better, then you, you can do that too, can't you? Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to keep making videos about whatever we see in here. And this th today, or this week, it just happened to be this depressing topic. But, you know, we've got to cover it. It's not right. You know, we know that the, the popular, the way to be popular on video on, on YouTube is to make videos about things people like and make them feel good, right? But if we only did that, we wouldn't be really showing you Japan, would we? If we only showed you the feel good, fuzzy wuzzy, make you feel warm and fuzzy stuff, we wouldn't be showing you the real Japan. We have to show you the. We we think we have to show you everything, and we think the people that support this channel do so because they want to see everything you know good and bad happy and sad so anyway there it was it's definitely not happy and it definitely was sad wasn't it this topic but anyway that's just the reality it's what's happening anyway there it was more videos coming soon